You're listening to The Jam Price Show, all about movies. And today, my guest is award-winning director-producer Jordan Prince-Wright. And we're going to talk about his brand new movie entitled Before Dawn. Welcome to the show, show Jordan. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, it's my pleasure. You you are in uh, Sydney. Where are you exactly right now? Uh, I'm in Perth at the moment, in uh, yeah, the uh, far side of Australia, so in the, re- the most remote city that we've got here in Australia. So, oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate you getting up early to be on the show today. So That's all right. No worries. I'm a bit of an early riser, so it's not that, it's not that bad. That's good. That good, good, good. Well, uh, before dawn, let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, this uh, there's so much to talk about in this film, but uh, so our audience knows uh, what we will be talking about. Can you tell us a brief synopsis of what Before Dawn is? Yeah. So Before Dawn is uh, based on true events, and it was actually I discovered it by reading these diaries when I was in high school. And um, it surrounds these, this particular uh, battalion during World War I. And when I read these diaries, I used to I actually spoke to a lot of people and I'd be like, oh, you know, World War I. And, and, and everyone knew about Gallipoli, but they didn't necessarily know about the Western Front and what the Allies did there. And that kind of became the uh, driving force as to why I wanted to tell this, the story. But, yeah, it's uh, based on true events of, the, of uh, this the Anzacs during World War One and their uh, contribution to World War One, but also uh, on a greater scale of what the Western Front actually meant to, uh, you know, essentially World War One and, and and winning the war as well. So, um, yeah, it's been quite an incredible uh, story that we've actually been able to put on the screen. And this is based on a true story, correct? Or is it multiple it is. stories? Is it one? Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty much multiple, yeah, that we kind of put all together, um, but it's multiple diaries. So uh, that's why we said based on true events, because it's like, yeah, it's a whole bunch of true stories all put together. And and that's what's quite incredible is that you got, uh, as I, I got to read and as everyone else that worked on it got to read these diaries and you would see the same event but from a different perspective of a different uh, Anzac. And so, uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's been quite, which is, it was quite challenging because the first script ended up being like a four-hour-long script, you know, which we had to kind of cut down, yeah. Did you write the script? Did you help write the script? Yeah, so uh, I kind of wrote the story as, a su- as such um, and then... Those that know me know I like to work with different screenwriters and the reason, there's a couple of reasons for that, but one of the main reasons is so that way when I'm on set directing, if we really need to cut cut a scene, it's for the benefit of uh, the film and the story and it's not like I'm going to turn it around and go, oh, but I spent six months writing that particular scene or scenes. Um, so that you kind of assist with uh, doing that detachment. But it also brings a different perspective in. So working with Jared uh, Russell, who was the screenwriter very closely, uh, pretty much he would write stuff and he'd send it to me and then I'd rewrite stuff and send it back to him. But um, it was really good because he would sit there and go, okay, we I'm writing this because this is the reason and then we'd have uh, great little arguments as to what was actually going to be better for the story or not. This is, all wars are terrible, but I think World War I in particular was uh, extremely difficult for so many different reasons. And you portray this in this film and really let us see and feel how what an awful war this was and what these men had to go through to survive. It just was horrific. Uh Given that, how horrific was it filming it? Because some of these scenes <laughs> are very difficult to to watch and wondered how they were filmed. Yeah, so I reckon by the first weekend we were we were over it because it was knee deep mud. It was pouring with rain. Um, it was that it actually got that bad that uh, there's a uh, Benjamin Scottford actually made a documentary on it. So there's a documentary oh. that's just starting to do a festival circuit now because. What, what the team went through to make this film is, you know, it, it's kind of, I sat there and watched back the documentary going, wow, you know, this is, this is a, almost astounding in a sense, you know, what we went through. But it was actually after that first week that we all, you know, as uh, a lot of us like to do, we all went to the pub that night and after the first week had a few drinks and then there were veterans there and current service men and women. 
and they started talking to the crew saying you know that this is not just it's not just a war movie we're making here you know we're honoring the men and women and their sacrifices and that really hit home and then all of a sudden every you could actually see everybody's brains almost switched and it was what one crew member put it really well is the worst it got the happier everyone became because it did it started to get really bad and then you started laughing at how bad things got you know we had 120 kilometer gusts of wind one day where the set literally like blew over and yeah it was a hard shoot but at the same time me as the director behind the screen was rubbing my hands together going this is perfect the coldest and wettest winter on record in this town that we filmed in and it was minus five degrees some nights it was pouring with rain like and it was just like this is great because this this is what it was actually like and this is what we wanted to capture so um yeah it was no it was no easy shoot, but at the end of the day, we weren't being shot at and we only had seven weeks of it. And at the end of the day, we could go back and actually have a shower and watch some Netflix and go to bed. So it was really hard, but also we had we were able to switch off occasionally as well, So, um, which those that served, they never did. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We really do portray it so well and so realistically, for sure. Yes. Uh, so you said there's a documentary about the filming of this movie. There is, yeah. So and it's called the, In the Trenches. In the Trenches, okay. And when yes. is that coming out? Uh, so it's just started doing the festival circuit now. Um, so we're pretty much telling everyone just to like uh, the Facebook and the Instagram page and then they can see what's going on with that. Um, and then I believe that when uh, Before Dawn eventually starts hitting streaming services and whatnot, then they'll start doing the same thing with the doco. Because, yeah, and, and the beauty of the documentary, what I love about it is that you don't have to watch Before Dawn to watch the documentary because the documentary is more about a whole bunch of people getting together to make the impossible, which was a World War One movie in Australia. And... Um, yeah, but the docos, I mean, look, the guy uh, that made the documentary, he walked up to me on the second day, and this is after the set blew over, uh, the tents and everything, and he's like, oh, you know, and he was only there to do behind the scenes. And he comes up, he's like, I'd like to make a documentary. And as a filmmaker, you're thinking, yeah, because things are going wrong, so that's great for you. But me as a producer's going, but this is bad. <laughs> but um, I'm so glad it has been done, though, and it, it's definitely worth a watch because it, it just shows you the uh, the struggles that not only the cast and crew went through, but it also just shows you it's a lot of people I know have always said, oh, yeah, I want to make a movie, et cetera, and they don't get around to it because people still to this day, I don't think, truly understand what goes into making a film and how hard a film actually is to make and get it on the screen. Yes, 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 yes. Well, I'm sure you've. I, when that comes out, I would love to do an interview with the filmmakers sure. on the film because I also, as you know, I cover documentary films, and that would be fascinating as a companion piece to this film for yes. sure. So yeah. I would love to yeah, do definitely. that. Yeah, uh, you could try to tease something up with the the director of uh, that doco as well uh, for sure. Yes, definitely. I would love to do that. And I'm sure you're familiar with Eleanor Coppola, who did a very famous documentary about the her husband filming. Um, a, Apocalypse, apocalypse. I can't even say it. Apocalypse now, and how difficult that was. That was an incredibly yeah. difficult shoot too. That went on forever. It seemed like so. Uh, so this is nice that you have this. Uh, you know, something for you to look at to what you actually went through too. Even though you yes. experienced it. Sometimes when we move away from it from a period of time, we don't re remember what it was really like, and then <laughs> it'll be a reminder for you too. So. What a nice uh, companion piece to have for sure. Uh, let's talk about the cast because the young actor who plays the lead, is it Levi Miller? Is that his? It is, yeah. He is um, actually so mesmerizing to watch on the screen. He really is. Um, he's so good. So tell, tell us a little bit about him and how you chose him and, and what it was like mm. working with him. Well, I actually first saw him perform in as as Peter Pan in the um, the Pan movie with Hugh Jackman, and I remember the when we were writing the script, um, we were talking about the flares and the piercing blue eyes, and straight away I just it it uh, you know. I thought straight back to that film and I'm going, well, he'd probably be about the right age now because he was a kid in that. And, and so I did a bit of searching, saw his head shot and we're like, that's, that's Jim. We're like straight away. Uh, he was the first one that um, Jared and I even said, okay, now as we're writing the script, we had this particular actor Levi in mind. So um, it was just, 
for me, sending emails, making phone calls. Um, I'm not a person that likes to take no for an answer. So eventually, I'm sure that this agent was like, fine, you know, I'll get him to do it sort of thing. But um, in all seriousness, we sent the script off to Levi. He came back and Levi's like, yeah, I'd love to do it. The Zoom call and like it was very, it was very smooth. It must have been like within a week or two, and he was signed on. He was going to do this film, and then the rest of the cast kind of just all started to fall into place. And I'm very much, uh, I grew up in the, uh, I mean, I grew up in the wrong era. Let's put it that way, because I, I watched Jal Brenner, Steve McQueen, John Wayne, all the old films. You know, Magnificent Seven. It was this great ensemble cast, great escape sort of thing, and that's a lot of the films that I've done or worked on. I've always wanted to have that same sort of feel, and same with this. I'm like, this needs to have that ensemble cast, all the different characteristics, the quirks of every different character, and. And so the casting, uh, I'm a strong believer as a director, half of your job is done if you cast correctly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so that that was uh, probably one of the hardest things to do was actually go, right, I need to get the right people for the cast and go through auditions and callbacks and then put photos up on the wall to go, okay, well, does he, he looks too similar to him, so we can't use him as that character because they'll be on screen at the same time and kind of, you know, uh, looking at uh, the aesthetics of it too. So... Um, yeah, it was it was a hard process, but working with all of them, yeah, Levi, as you mentioned, as the lead, uh, Miles, Tim Franklin, Stephen Peacock, uh, who played the uh, uh, Corporal Beale at the start, um, he was also fantastic to work with. Um, then there was like a few new upcomers, Jordan Delu, Ed Oxenbold, obviously, and so kind of being able to work with all them, and then and then above all too was also Travis that w uh, was across from Levi, you know, who played Nichols. You know, they they were such important roles for that friction, but then also the mateship that would just happen. Like that's how it happened in the diaries. One minute they hated each other, next minute they liked each other. So, um, yeah, having to really uh, knuckle down and get that cast correct was so so important for this film. Well, it, yeah, it is. It's a wonderful cast, and they do work well together. Uh, definitely, it's a great ensemble cast for sure. For them, did any of them uh, revolt after a while, after being in those muddy trunches? <laughs> did they go, so, what the heck did I sign up for? <laughs> well, uh, the, 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 everybody loved it when we went up to Q, where we did all the outback scenes for about a week to two weeks up there. And I remember we all got up there and we had uh, one of the actors goes, oh, because because we had about a three-week break between the shoot. He went off and did something else and came back. And he turned around and he said, oh, I was on this other shoot. And this was like massive, massive budget, sort of Hollywood budget level. And uh, he said, oh, yeah, some people were complaining that, oh, you know, it's a little bit cold. And it was though in like some studio. And he looked and he reckons he's just like, he goes, oh, I, I almost rolled my eyes thinking, mate, you've got no idea. <laughs> no idea. This is an air con in here. Try being out in minus five in mud and rain. So, but no, they're all, they're all really good to work with. Um but it was one of those things that, yeah, I, look, we didn't really know what we were in for until we were until we were there. But um, yeah, the, uh, everyone kind of banded together pretty well. What I did also with the the lead cast, so we all the crew, we all had where we stayed because it was a remote town. We all had separate uh, accommodation, so we all had separate rooms. Where the cast, I put them in essentially one house. So whilst they may have their own room, they were still in a house. So when they're in the trenches on top of each other, when they'd go back, they didn't really get a break. They're still on top of each other. And, I, and we did like little things like that. You know, I gave them all a rendered rifle at the start of the shoot and said, right, this rifle goes with you everywhere. So that way, by the end of pre-production, sorry, not the shoot, by the end of pre-production, when they're on set, they would just, it was second nature. They'd pick their rifle up the way they're holding their rifle and the, everything natural. So, you know, there's a lot of little things like that, but... You know, making sure that they were living on top of each other then meant that they were, um, you know, they were almost getting on each other's nerves both when we were in the trenches and out of the trenches, which was great because that's what I wanted. <laughs> true method. He did a true method. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whether they were method actors or not, I was going to put them through it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you said seven weeks? It took you seven weeks to film this? Yeah, seven weeks. And it was... Yeah, it was the hardest seven weeks that we've ever done. Like uh, I, th I say that most of the crew, we don't ever want to see mud or rain or sandbags ever again. <laughs> so if, if you come back to them with another script for another war movie, <laughs> you're going to say sorry. Uh -uh, we're yeah. not doing. They this. keep going. When are we doing? A, when are we going to do a film like on you know on the Bahamas beach or something one day like that? I'm like yeah, no, not yet. 
<laughs> I see. Well, you're quite the young filmmaker. You started rather young in your career uh, and, and you're obviously still very young. So you've had great success early on. Um, what do you, for you, what does that meant for just to you in general for having that early success? And obviously you're continuing it. You've started your own production company. Let's talk a little bit about that, but also how, how you, cause you started, I think what in high school, is that correct? You started yeah, yeah so so that's in high school. Yeah. very young to start doing this and you know and having success but did that it, sometimes people have that early success and they said yeah I, don't, I think I'm going to do something else now I'm not sure I really want to do this did you ever have that feeling or did you always know this is what nah, you wanted I used to, to do I used to run around when I was in when I would have been I was year three so you're about what 10 11 years old i used to run around with a handy cam and reenact films and like I, like I was always creating stuff then i was going into a um government job that's what i you know i was looking at right customs i was going to do like border security and then i hit high school and they're like no no you you know this media class and i'm going oh you can actually do media uh here in australia because in my head it was something that was this, this dream of being in Hollywood, you couldn't do it anywhere else in the world because you're very young, you don't understand how it kind of works. And um, as soon as I found that out, got home, told my parents, I said, look, I'm going into the arts industry, which they immediately went, oh, he's going from a border security job to the arts, which may or may not pay anything. Um, but no, they've been super, super supportive and really, you know, in fact, uh, when you watch the docker, you see them working behind the scenes. And... Um, yeah, I just made the short films. Jack Thompson, I got some great advice from him and everything's just been on like that trajectory ever since. And uh, I'm a strong believer in bite off more than you can chew and chew like crazy. And, you know, I, you know, and yeah, and I've got, look, and also uh, I have an amazing team around me. You know, you're only ever as good as the people you surround yourself with. And I've got an amazing team to keep pushing, pushing forward. Um, we've got, uh, I'm off to work with a major uh, studio, which everybody would know this particular studio because it's like the, probably the biggest in the world in December. And then after that, then we've got another film that we're going to be producing uh, in Australia and it's going to be a co-production with overseas as well. And, you know, and that's the same sort of thing. I was like, yep, cool, I'll do it, but I want to be able to pick certain crews. So, um you want to be where? Yeah, it's, it's real. I want to be able to pick the crew, you know, because oh. I'm like, you know, if, if people are investing in me, it's like, we're well, not just investing in me, you're investing in the people behind me as well. So, oh. yeah, it's, look, it's fantastic. I kind of pinch myself regularly that I get to do this and, you know, I love it. And the best part is when you, you leave a cinema and people are happy or crying or with before dawn of the premiere, we had 1500 odd people that rocked up to the premiere. And at the end, the PR team kind of like moved me out to the carpet for people to have photos and everyone that was coming up was in tears. And I was like, Oh no, what have I done? What have I done? You know? Um, but it was, yeah, it was really, it was really good to see that, you know, they had gone on this emotional journey and the purpose of this film was awareness of those sacrifices and people have understood those stories and have felt those, that those emotions. And, yeah, to be able to say that we made that and then also look at now going, hey, we've now got a slate of films that we've got lined up. It's, yeah, it's, it's really exciting. It is exciting. I'm excited for you too, yeah. You, you started your own production company too, and you have a, uh, you, is it a unique way of raising money for your films? Is that, you know, people tell us a little bit about that. People are always interested. How do you make money? How do you raise money for it to make a movie? So, yeah. So, um, I, so one of my short films that I did back in high school, uh, was in a remote town in the middle of nowhere. And I was like, right, I'm going to go to the Shire, like the local government say, if I'm filming here, um, we're going to be promoting, you know, your your shire, your landscapes, etc. So I want funding from you. So I went to the local council meetings, and um, we got five thousand dollars, which is like, whoa, you know, as you know, as a high school, that's like that's like winning the lotto. You know, five thousand bucks to make a short film was was <laughs> tremendous. Yeah. And uh, so we made the short film and that, and then the next one I did the same sort of thing, but I got a few sponsors on board and there was like, you know, a cafe that gave us 500 bucks or whatever. And, and then it was that business structure as a sense that I've still kept, but on steroids. So before Dawn was sponsored by your BP Caltex, you know, big, you know, uh, pretty much like your Woolies, your IGA. Um, so it's, it's all your massive. So Ford got behind it, Toyota. So 
it, uh, pretty much if it was a case of going, okay, we need cars on set, well, let's get companies to support with the cars. Okay, Integrity Coach Lines, um, which uh, or Pinnacles, uh, so they're pretty much uh, all the coaches in Australia. And uh, let's get them on board so they can supply us three coaches. Um, let's get Isuzu on board so they can supply us all the trucks. So it was working in a sense that in-kind situation and one of our explosions cost $1.4 million that went up in 10 seconds, but that was also sponsored. Um, and that was by getting Jonex explosives and dynamic drill and blast on board to say this is what we want. And it was eight months of surveying the ground, planning. Like it was pretty full on. Uh, but it was the same sort of thing going, okay, well, these guys, we had three or four different companies all supplying explosives to get. So it was, and then also with our films, we also support charity as well. So Telethon, which happens in, in Western Australia, we support that because if it wasn't for Telethon, a particular hospital wouldn't have had the equipment that saved my life when I was uh, three years old. So, um, yeah, it has been uh, it's been an interesting uh, interesting journey. But yeah, it's not your typical fill out some paperwork, wait seven years to see whether you got gov uh, you know funding from the appropriate government body. It's like no, let's actually go to businesses direct and raise the money. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I love that you're giving back too. That's even more important that, you know, that's, that's the, that's the key. <laughs> the key yeah, it is, you know, yeah. yeah. But also then people see that, okay, well, there's, uh, there's a bigger picture here. So then they want to be involved in the next one and follow, following on. Yeah. 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 So what is, you said you have a big studio film coming up. Can you talk about that or? Uh, I do. Uh, so I'm off to work for them in December and that's as much as I can say at the moment. But okay. the announcements are coming out soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Lift the seals. <laughs> okay, all right. So in December, you're going to actually start shooting? Uh, that's the plan. But okay. um, as everyone knows, it's because it's a studio, it could just get pushed back. And, yes, at this stage, it's like uh, everyone knows that it's December, but, uh, yeah, it could get pushed back. But I'll be producing on that project, uh, not directing. And then uh, I will be directing the next uh, next film, which we start shooting mid, mid next year in Australia. Okay. All right. Well, I want to have you back on for both of those. So you're producing the next one then? Yeah, producing, okay. and then I'll get back into the directing seat, which I'm excited about. So in a sense, I'm kind of – I've gone off to go do this other job to learn uh, from those producers because they're going to be working with millions and millions billions of dollars. So mm -hmm. um, that's why I said yes to it, not because – I get to work on it, but because I'm going to be picking picking their brains through the whole thing and just observing, really, and learning to then apply to my own films. That's wonderful. Wow, you've got a great career going there, Jordan. I really, You really do. You. I'm very excited for you, and I'm looking forward to seeing what other wonderful things that you do with your career as time goes on. I'd love to have you back on to talk about your future pro projects. Before we go, though, where can everybody see Before Dawn? Yeah, so Before Dawn uh, is out as of uh, tomorrow, so July 19. Um, it's going to be in various cinemas. It's got a, a release on streaming services. Um, so, yeah, pretty much if, pe if people jump onto the WellGo uh, USA uh, uh, Instagram page or even the WellGo website and they can, you know, look up there, that will link them to their local cinemas. And, um, yeah, it, it's definitely I, – I made this film to watch in cinemas, so whilst we're still having a digital release, it's like, yep, look, if you've got to watch on digital, fair enough. But if you can get to a cinema to see it, it's definitely – that's the experience you want to see it in, especially with all the, the sound that we've put into it and the visuals. And it's been made for the big screen. It's yeah. been made to watch in a cinema. So I definitely encourage people to see it that way. I agree. I agree. It's definitely a film for the big for the big screen too. And I think movies should be seen on the big screen. So that's my mantra. Yeah. I say it all the time. Well, I wish you much success with Before Dawn and with your future projects. And again, I look forward to having you back on the show and thank you for being on the show today no worries thanks for your time appreciate it thank you